Let's talk about what you actually need to know about porting Gato games to consoles. The Gato engine is open source as its greatest strength. And when it comes to console development, it's also the proverbial elephant in the room. Console manufacturers like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo protect their platforms with something called NDAs or non-disclosure agreements. Their SDKs, development documentation, and even hardware specs are proprietary and sharing that info with anyone is a really, really bad idea. Right to jail, right away. Gato Engine source code is public. It's on GitHub, anyone can read it. So if someone integrated Nintendo's SDK code directly into Gato's public repo, that's a problem. This is why you won't find official built-in console export templates in the Gato Engine like you do in Unity or Unreal. Unity and Unreal can include console support because they're proprietary. Their code bases aren't fully public, so they can integrate all of that secret code without a whole bunch of legal issues. But before you even think about exporting, you need to handle something else first, getting approved by the console platforms themselves. Here's what a lot of first time developers don't realize. You can't just port your game to a console and release it. You need permission from the platform holder and that permission is not gonna be automatic. Every console manufacturer has a developer program you must join. Nintendo has a Nintendo developer portal, Sony has PlayStation Partners, Microsoft has ID at Xbox. This is how you gain access to the development kits, SDKs, and all of the documentation needed to build for these platforms. Some of this is free. Microsoft, for example, does a free development mode on retail Xboxes, but other platforms require you to purchase or lease development hardware, which is gonna cost you hundreds of dollars. Your application is usually going to include the following. Info about your game, its concept, genre, features, your development timeline, your studio's background, and your credentials. Look, platforms wanna know you're serious. If you have a released game on the PC or mobile, that can help and a portfolio of previous work, even if it's small, can demonstrate you know what you're doing. And you really should apply early. These approvals can take weeks or even months, and you're gonna need that access before you can even think about porting your game. Now let's talk about the actual porting process. For a Gato game, you have three main options. Option number one, professional porting services. Companies like Sickhead, Pineapple Works, and others specialize in porting games to consoles. You provide your Gato project, they handle the technical work, platform specific code optimization, and the certification. We'll take it from here. This is gonna be the most expensive option. Like they need to have a conversation with you before they give you a price expensive, but it's also the most hands-off. So if you have the budget, but lack the knowledge, then this is gonna be your path. Option number two, porting middleware. This is where companies like W4 Games Come in. I also want to thank W4 Games for actually sponsoring this video as a way to get more info on the console porting process for the Gato engine out there. With W4 consoles, W4 Games offers access to console enabled Gato engine builds and export templates, a lot like Unity and Unreal. You license their middleware, implement their SDK, and then you gain access to the console export functionality you don't violate any of the NDAs. This is gonna be more affordable than full porting services. For example, a small indie developer or a team is likely gonna be paying $800 per year per console. But this also requires you to handle more of the technical work yourself. This is where the fun begins. W4 Games does provide support and documentation, but you're gonna be in charge of the heavy lifting. The middleware option is good if you don't have a lot of money to throw around, but you've got the programming knowledge to make up the difference. Option number three, work with a publisher. If your game is already getting attention pre-release, you might also be connecting with publishers. Publishers can fund and manage console ports as part of a publishing deal. The deal is that they typically take a revenue share, but handle porting costs, certification, marketing, and distribution. This option is gonna make sense if you're early in development and your game is getting some attention. The trade-off is that you can actually lose some creative control and you'll end up with a smaller revenue percentage. So how do you choose? Well, what's your budget? Professional services cost the most, middleware is mid-range, publishers fund it, but they're gonna take revenue share. What's your timeline? Services are fastest, middleware relies on you and your speed, and publishers add negotiation time. What's your technical expertise? Can you actually implement the SDKs and debug platform specific issues? The best option is really going to depend on your game, your knowledge and your resources. Let's say your game is 
ported. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. The code compiles, it runs on the target console, you think you're done, and you're ready to buy that house on the beach. Well, don't start playing Jimmy Buffett and drinking margaritas because you're not done yet. Every console platform has a certification process sometimes called technical requirements checking or TRC. This is where the platform holder tests your game to ensure it meets their standards. So what are they checking? First, stability. Does your game crash? Are there game breaking bugs? Second, quality standards. This includes UI legibility, like can players read your text from a couch 10 feet away? Do your button prompts match the platform's conventions? Third, platform specific features. If your game has achievements or trophies, are they implemented correctly? Does your game display the right legal text and age ratings? Needless to say, there's a lot to think about. And if your submission fails certification, then you have to fix the issues and resubmit. And this process repeats until you pass. And it means you need to budget more time and potentially more money for multiple rounds of testing and changes to your game. So porting isn't just the technical stuff. It also involves thinking about the design of your game. On PC, you can rely on keyboard and mouse and on consoles, you can't. Every menu, every interaction, every gameplay mechanic, it has to work flawlessly with a controller. We already mentioned having the UI be more readable. It's likely your text is gonna to need to be larger, contrast needs to be higher, and the UI elements need more spacing. It's a good practice to test your game on a TV from across the room. And if you can't read your menus or HUD, neither can your players. You also need to think about the differences in performance per platform. The Switch has significantly less power than the PS5. You might target 1080p at 60 FPS on PS5, but on Switch, you're gonna be aiming for 720 docked and 30 FPS. And that's if you optimize like a lot. This means adjustable graphic settings, scalable rendering, and potentially different art asset resolutions for different platforms. It's a lot of extra work to consider, so it wouldn't be crazy to ask yourself, should I even do this? Not every game should be ported to consoles. I've made a huge mistake. But having your game on consoles can make a huge difference. So ask yourself some questions before you start. Is your game already performing well on PC or mobile? Porting is expensive. If your game isn't selling, porting is not gonna fix that. You're investing thousands of dollars and months of work. So make sure someone on the other end wants to play your game. Is your game naturally controller friendly? If you're making a game that's a strategy game and has a lot of pointing and clicking, is it really gonna translate well to a console? Action games, platformers, roguelikes, these are usually better options. Do you have the resources? Whether it's a budget for porting services or technical expertise to do it yourself or wanting to actually negotiate with publishers, you need a path forward. If you're getting the right answers to these questions, then Porting might make sense. Consoles offer access to different player demographics, additional revenue streams, and increased legitimacy to you. A console release signals professionalism and can open a lot of doors for future projects. But if your game is still in early development and you're struggling to find an audience or it's just designed for keyboard and mouse, focus on the PC version first. Here's some things you can do right now, even if you're not sure. Design with controllers in mind from the start. Build your UI with TVs in mind. Plan for lower end hardware. Document your architecture. Whether you're porting the game yourself or you're handing it to a third party, clear documentation of your code structure, dependencies and design decisions are gonna save you a ton of time or someone else a ton of time. Release on the PC. First, polish your game, fix the bugs, optimize performance, build that audience. This is gonna prove market viability and it's gonna make it a lot easier to get approval for platforms. And finally, apply to developer programs early. You can do this right now. Even if you're a year away from porting, start the application process, get approved, and then you'll have access to actually do the thing you wanna do. Porting, it takes a lot. Gato's open source nature creates really unique challenges, but there are solutions. The key is understanding what you're signing up for. It's not impossible, it just takes more than pressing an export button.